What's going on guys? Mr. Business, Logan JYA, Dry Kage at it again, and this time we got something a little different. I received a YouTube comment not too long ago that put a smile on my face. Someone asking about Edison format, and this is a format that I do indeed enjoy to play. In fact, we got a locals here in the area. Shout out to the hobby shop that actually runs Edison tournaments. Also, shout out to JRad for putting those together. Everybody, you can find out more about the Edison format in the link in the description down below. I'm not going to give you a full in-depth tutorial that's not what I'm here for. Instead, I'm going to show you the deck that I choose to play whenever it's time to break out Edison. And in my opinion, this truly is the Drytron deck of Edison format. I kid you not, this is the only deck I really play in this format because I absolutely love it. So let me know what you think about it in the comments down below. Let me know if you're going to give this format a try. And without further ado, let's dive into the deck profile. Let's do it. Before we get into things, I want to remind you guys, you can get your hands on the Medionis Drytron. Kage Field Center is exclusive here. We actually have them in hand shipping out now. Use the link to my website in the description down below to get yours today. These things are absolutely gorgeous and so much fun to flex on your opponents with. Be sure to check them out. It means the world to me if you do, but if you don't, hey, no hard feelings. All right, guys. So I had a really cool YouTube comment recommendation to do my Edison deck profile, and I'm like, you know what? Sure, why not? I know there's a bunch of Edison lists, and it's a format from several, several years ago. If you you want the link to more information about Edison, there's actually a really good website on it. I'll throw it down in the description down below so you can read more about it. It's an alt format that sees an immense amount of play, and they even started doing it in person in my local area. So when I had the chance to, I like to go to those tournaments, and this is the deck that I choose to play, and in many ways, I kid you not, this is the Drytron of Edison format. I'm not just saying that for clickbait. I mean it, and you're going to see it as we go through. Now, this might be a list you're familiar with. This is my personal take on it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And if you want to play some Edison duels, then join our Discord and let me know that you want to play. Hit me up. I'm always down to test when I have time. <laughs> so without further ado, let's dive into things. All right, guys, so if you couldn't guess, it's Christia Control. We're starting off with the homie Christia, the three of the vanities ruler of this deck in many ways. Now, the reason why I say this is a Drytron deck you're going to see in a minute here, it's stacked with beautiful light fairies. That's right, and I know our Drytrons themselves are light machines, and some of those make some appearances here and there, that's for sure, but... Primarily, we're talking about our girl Ben 10 and our Herald that chill with her, bro. So we are playing some of those things in here, at least those that were legal at the time. So Christy is your vanity's ruler. You can special summon it when you got four fairies in the grave. It has to be exactly that. When it hits the field, you get to add one back to hand. Pretty nice. Free advantage. And then neither player can special summon. You don't really care because once this guy hits the field, that is like your big threat, your biggest boss monster. So we choose to max it out at three, and occasionally you may want to side one out, but it is insanely, insanely strong. It's the name sake of the deck. Moving on from there, we got triple copies of Herald of the Orange Light. Oh, that's right. Look at that. Playing three of this. Wow, that's a throwback. Anyway, yeah, you all know what this card does. We play infinite light fairies, so we have plenty, any infinite fairies in general, we have plenty of targets for it. Speaking of hand traps, we also got two honest. And I'm gonna say this, this is one of the very few decks in Edison that actually can main deck some hand traps. The only other hand trap that was really in existence at the time, I think, don't quote me on this, was like DD Crow and Herald of Orange Light. And this deck plays one of the most powerful gamma levels of hand trap. So it's insane to play. And then honest is also cracked too. So this card's absolutely insane. I think you guys probably know what it does, given the attack points and the damage step, it makes it able to uh, clear over problematic monsters. It's one of the best things you can add back off of your Christia. You just keep looping these things. It's crazy. Moving on, we got triple copies of the Shining Angel to fill up your grave with fairies. And so you can do it with just one of them. Say you opened Angel uh, plus Christia, and your opponent has a monster with enough attack points that you can crash into it. You play also one additional card, the Nova Summoner. So you can actually just go through all of your Shining Angel targets and then end up going into the Nova Summoner, swing into it one last time, summon out one final card, go main phase two, special out your Christia for free, and you're all set. The only difference between Nova Summoner and Shining Angel is this one has to summon a fairy. Shining Angel summons any light. Moving on from there, Triple Cop is the d -Alk, another light fairy who just kind of generates advantage by banishing cards from the top of your deck, and then when he gets destroyed or sent, to the, sent from field to grave, I think is the correct term, you get to add something back from your banished, a banished monster. He's pretty, pretty strong in that way, and he boosts himself up. He's pretty good for the tempo, and again, being a light fairy. 
We got two more of those guys right here in the form of the Soul of Purity and Light. Now, this is important for graveyard modulation. In case you accidentally dump too many fairies into the grave, that's all right. You got your Soul of Purity and Light. You can clear some of those joints out of there. Make room so you can slap down your Christia. It banishes two to summon. Any two lights out of the graveyard is a 2k attack beater, kind of like a pseudo chaos monster. Now, the, the, I already told you the important reason to play in this, but I wouldn't play three of this because then you're kind of asking to brick because he needs the graveyard set up to be functioning. Now moving off of the Light Fairies and into some of the other supporting casts, we got two copies of the Thunder King Ryo. This is Thunder Dragon Colossus, if you didn't know that, and also negates inherent special summons. Pretty strong card, amazing card to start with, honestly. Follow that up with two copies of the DD Warrior Lady. This card's extra strong because it's a target you can summon off of the Shining Angel. Big fan of that. Follow that up with the one copy of Gores. Gores is a legendary card of the Edison format. If you're familiar with the format, you definitely know how crazy this card is. It actually shifts how people declare their attacks because it's that impactful. And the final monster we play is triple copies of Raikou the Lightsworn Hunter. So this was a very key piece of removal back in the day. In fact, when you're playing a deck like Christia Control, you want to be careful. Be wary of your opponent's set monsters because it might be a Raikou. you got to be careful because those kind of things can pop your Christia, pop your problem cards, but you use it in the same way. Also, you're filling up your grave with fairies perhaps, when you're milling off of this card. So it is quite strong for the strategy. That's everything for the monsters. Let's hop into spells. We got two copies of the Book of Moon. Very, pretty much like a staple card as well at the time, you know, just, it's kind of like removal. It's still technically a neg one, but it helps you book things, stop your opponent from getting synchro plays, keeping them off of tuners. Some very important things to keep in mind that you can use this card for. So Book of Moon, in my opinion, is very strong at two. And say you're playing against the Mirror Match, it's technically an out the Christia, so keep it, keep that in mind too. We got one copy of MST as a form of spell and trap removal, as well as the Heavy Strom. That's right, Heavy Strom was legal at this time. So you play this to blow out those back rows. Very, very good. And finally, the one last spell that I play in the main is the Charge of the Light Brigade to search out your right goes. It's This card was at one for a reason, because it was a very powerful search. It was better than Roto, because is loading up your graveyard, as crazy as that sounds. It does mill for cost, right? But hey, that's not a big deal. We don't really care. We just want to dump stuff into the grave. Moving into the traps, we actually do play a good amount of traps in the main deck. And like I said, this is kind of a control strategy. It's not really like a combo deck. There are combo decks in Edison. This is not really one of them. You could play the Christia deck as a Lightsworn variant, but I think it's just, <laughs> it makes both decks worse in my opinion. But hey, let me know if you disagree in the comments down below. We're playing some traps. Like I said, we're playing 2D Prison. This was a pretty good generic piece of removal. It makes people fear the battle phase when you have a set card. Same thing goes for the Mighty Mirror Force. That's right, MF coming in hot. Blow out all those monsters. It's a, it's a power card defining the format. Same thing goes for Torrential Tribute. Oh, Torrential is still good nowadays. I think we all know that. We got one copy of the Bottomless Trap Hole. This is another card you want to fear when you're dropping your Christia, right? If they have a back row and it's bottomless, that, that Christia is going to get out of here real quick. Say sayonara to that guy, but you do still get your ad back, so keep that in mind. Sometimes you can actually force through a bottomless with a Christia. It can make for a pretty good bait. This is one of the broken cards of the format, the Royal Oppression. This is like a special summon negator card. Both players can choose to use its effect. But whoever flips it up first is probably in the better advantage because you're stopping something inherently with it. And then if you can remove it later, that puts you in a pretty good situation. Or you can just control the game even with it on the field. It's pretty good. Another cracked card from the times, the Trap Dust Shoot. Oh no, it's an icky card. Taking a look at the opponent's hand, ripping out a monster. It was crazy in Goat, it was crazy in Edison. And now it's banned as, as it should be. Following that up. Solemn Judgment, the man who says no will see play in this deck. Absolutely same thing goes for the Call of the Haunted. Bringing back that Christia, baby, or anything else out of your graveyard. It's pretty darn good. This card was a staple for a very, very long time. Until it was eventually power creep. And then final card in the main, one of my favorite Saki one-ofs in this strategy is the return from a different dimension. You're banishing cards with your souls and soul purity and light. You're banishing cards with your D-Alks. This card is insane at closing out games. This can be the make or break for your matchup. So keep that in mind. I love this card. Return from a different dimension. Another card that is banned for a reason. All right. That's everything for the main. I'm going to run through the extra real quick. It's a mostly generic synchros that you can make as well as one other thing. 
So we got the one copy of the Armory Arm. You can make this with a Herald and a Ryko, and I have done that before. It does come up, so keep that in mind. Armory Arm is not bad, giving things attack points, making it do that Ring of Destruction effect. We got the copy of Ally, a Justice Cataster. Um, not the easiest to make in this deck. I'm kind of struggling to think about how you would do it. Like, what level threes am I really playing that you could use? I don't even know. It's in here. Maybe, oh, oh, we have side deck cards that this works with. That's right. Same thing goes for the Magical Android, gaining life points. It's kind of cool. We got the copy of Brionic. Sixes are pretty easy to make because Herald plus any four. And Brio is pre errata, so this card's pretty insane. Pitch as many as you want to bounce as many as you want. Uh, one copy of Goyo Guardian. That's probably the strongest six in my in my opinion. He has the most attack points too. He's generic at the time of Edison. He should have stayed generic. I don't know why they errated this card. It was so pointless. Anyway. He steals monsters. He steals monsters. He's pretty crazy like that. One copy of Black Rose Dragon. I don't think main deck wise there's really any easy way to make this, but hey, it's in here just cuz. Uh, we got our Colossal Fighter, kind of a level 8 staple of the time. It makes a fair amount of sense to play it in my opinion. Same thing goes for the Thought Ruler Archfiend. Protection from targeting. This is really good if you're fearing something like a Dimensional Prison. Then we've got the mighty Red Dragon Archfiend, that's right. Red Dragon Archfiend was indeed playable, he's one of the bigger level 8s that you can summon with that 3k attack, so it did make sense to play it. And then we got two copies of Stardust Dragon. Stardust we choose to play it too for a very specific reason, there's a card called Starlight Road that may or may not be in our side deck, so that's why we're playing two of him. And then the last level 8 synchro that I'm playing is one that's very unique to this strategy. It's the Avenging Knight Parshath. You need to use a light monster to make it, and it does have a piercing effect, which is like seldom ever comes up, but it's good to have the option in there. We got the one copy of Mistworm. Again, probably a struggle to make. It's a 9 that needs 3 monsters, so I mean, like, good luck with that, right? And then finally, we got two copies of Chimera Tech Fortress Dragon for a very important card on the side deck. A light machine card in the side deck. Oh, yeah. So let's do the side deck real quick to close things out. I've got one copy of Lila, the Light Sworn Sorceress. She's another target to search your charge of Light Brigade. I bring this in almost all the time whenever I'm going to second in Edison format as the other search target, and it is great. It's really, really clutch to have that option, a different form of removal that's also got attack points and still provides you with that mill. It's pretty, pretty good. Same thing goes for our boy Cyber Dragon, another one that I love to bring in almost every single time going second. I would argue it's probably worthwhile to bring this up to three just because of how free it makes the gadget matchup and how good it is generically whenever you're going second. This big this big free body is something not to sleep on. Follow that up with two copies of Consecrated Light. This is a light fairy monster that just absolutely obliterates any dark matchup. My gosh, bro. Tell Black Wings, tell Black Salvos to, you know, Sugma. This card is insane. They can literally Sugma your balls when you throw it up on the field. We got two copies of Banisher of the Light, or Banisher of the Radiance, excuse me. You might think this conflicts with our main strategy because we want stuff in our graveyard, but there are certain matchups that this card actually actually hurts more, so it is worthwhile to bring it in. Anything that's graveyard reliant, I'm looking at you Light Sworns. We bring in the Banisher, the Radiance, it absolutely obliterates them, and it is a Light Fairy. We can take advantage of that. At worst, we can pitch it for our freaking uh, Orange Light. Moving on to spells, I've got one copy of Soul Release. You could change this if you wanted to. This could easily be the third Cyber Dragon, but I think it's a cute card. It's something else to bring in against Light Swarms or any other Graveyard Reliant deck. Someone that's playing Dark Arm Dragon, get, get rid of all their darks out of the graveyard. It's a free banish. That's how you think about it. You can also use it on your own graveyard if you need to make room for Christia. Moving on from there, two copies of the Noble Mana Cross out. This is not bad in this format because there are some flip effect reliant decks like the Black Salvos setting up their uh, choo choo trains, uh, the Koichis. You can get those things right on out of there with the might of the Noble Mana Cross out. Speaking of generic removal, we're playing two Smashing Grounds, another good generic going second card. Especially important for the mirror match. People are going to bring this in against you all the time, trust me. And since this only pops one card, it can't be Starlight Roaded. One copy of Royal Oppression, another copy for when you're going first. Bring in that second copy, it's pretty insane against any special summon reliant deck. And then finally, the last two cards for protection for your Christia, for your back rows, for your boards, the Starlight Roads. It summons out Stardust for free too while you're at it. Pretty, pretty nice. So that is everything for my Edison deck, the Christia Control, aka Drytron in Edison format. I absolutely love this strategy. If you like it, give it a shot. And if you want to play it a sim format, join the Discord. I'm going to try and get a little group going of people who are interested in playing. Maybe we can make a roll or something for it. But with all that being said, Logan JYA signing off. Have a nice day, and I'll see you beautiful people later. Peace. <laughs>